Hey class, this is part two of our video for chapter six. We are now on to the fifth um, appeal, and this is the emotional appeal of aggression. Um, this is a, a normal emotion that all of us have. has. Um, unfortunately, it has a bad reputation. Usually we think of aggression in a negative way, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. We all have a need to release some sort of anger, some sort of frustration, and a lot of that is channeled in, in some of these like car ads. Notice it says aggression in its most elegant form. You know, it's a car that has super speed, super power, and uh, it's supposed to make us feel alive or, or make us feel like we're in control. Um, below is another link that you can click on and it's a commercial ad. Again, please make sure you take a moment to watch my commercial links as well. Next is um, for the emotional appeals, the need to achieve. We all have this desire. Um, that's why you guys, a lot of you are in school, right? You're trying to achieve something. Um, I love this one. We don't even see the athlete's face, but we do see the slogan, all dreams are crazy until they come true. Um, and, you know, it's just like a beautiful uh, appeal to emotion because we all want some sort of success in our lives. Another appeal is the need to dominate. Um, it's, these are just some of the funniest ads. Um, what is his name? Uh, Ray Liotta, I think. Uh, and he has a lot of commercial ads. This is actually a print ad. The domination appeal is basically the need to be on top, you know, to be, to be the guy in charge. And you can see this in the two commercial ads that I posted. He just basically walks into a bar and he commands everybody's attention and everybody's obedience. Um, I think this is hilarious and I wanted to <clears throat> share it with the rest of you. And this is our natural desire to dominate, to be on top and to be in control. The eighth is the need for prominence, and this basically is the desire for, uh, you know, the rich and lavish lifestyle. I'm sure we all want this, you know, there's some kind of shoe that we're wanting to buy that is too expensive, or a car that we're yearning for that we just can't afford, <laughs> or that mansion that you happen to see in, you know, um, one of those reality shows. Um, I personally would love Kim Kardashian's just kitchen, her refrigerator space, <laughs> and uh, I think her chef would also be wonderful to have. <laughs> so um, the need for prominence is, an, again, a desire for us to have that high and mighty type of living. You see this in the Don Julio tequila um, advertisement, A Nod to the Dons, and I also put a commercial ad for you guys to check out. Then we have number nine, the need for attention. Um, this is a very typical one. I think uh, it's, it's one of the most commonly used emotional appeals. Notice that this is a crest ad and Honestly, all you get in this advertisement is a woman's face and her smile and her beautiful teeth. Um, and your attention just gravitates towards her mouth, um, maybe because her teeth are so perfect. And it does say in the, in the slogan, heads will turn. And again, you will capture the attention that you are seeking. Um, we are living in an Instagram age, and I'm sure um, you're all familiar with this appeal because we see this all the time. You know, like normal people suddenly become models on Instagram um, because that need for attention is very much alive in all of us. Number 10 is the need for autonomy. Now, autonomy means independence, to be self-sufficient. Um, and I wanted to put this print ad on purpose because even though a lot of people might, might assume that this is uh, the sexual appeal at work just because this girl is, um, you know, half naked, but there's more to it than that. Notice the look of confidence on her face. Notice the, the slogan, be dazzling, be you. This is a very much, it's a call for all of us to just kind of embrace ourselves and to be confident in our own skin. And you see that happening with this girl who's advertising 
panes, you know, which is underwear, um, and you see that confidence on her face. And I put another commercial ad for you guys to check out um, that also uses the need for autonomy. Eleven is hilarious, the need to escape. We all want this. You guys are probably going to feel this way uh, maybe closer to the end of, of this term when you're already exhausted and, and you just want out, you want to go on a little vacation. Now, I put this print ad because, you know, there is this guy who is just totally in his own world, totally relaxed, just sleeping the day away, and then he's surrounded by sharks but just does not care. <laughs> And, you know, that need to escape can exist in so many ways. We, we see this appeal in a lot of those um, uh, Disneyland commercials um, or any other amusement park. Uh, we see this in a lot of um, adventure commercials like, you know, the uh, traveling commercials that are trying to get us to travel to certain destinations. And here's another commercial ad for you guys that uses the appeal. Number 12 is the need to feel safe. We all have this need, especially in this day and age, when there's usually some kind of threat wavering behind us. This one is the threat of, you know, just being on the road and, and having that risk always upon us that we need to be careful, not just in how we're driving, but also in being a pedestrian or, or just even being, you know, the car on the road that is paying attention while another car is not. Um, and then of course, here's another ad where it's just, you know, natural disasters happen. There's danger everywhere. And the need to feel safe is uh, a desire in us to Try to find some way of avoiding that danger. 13 I love. Um, and I, I put, you know, notice how three of the, the advertisements are Louis Vuitton ads. Um, and basically number 13 is the need for aesthetic sensations. Aesthetics is, um, or aestheticism is our love and appreciation for beauty. And now since beauty is objective, you know, what exactly translates as beauty? A lot of times these authors or these advertisers, they create beauty through landscapes or through artwork. Notice this one, this is a WWF ad. This is from a nonprofit organization. Um, and it's uh, supposed to be an ad about global warming and you get a, an ice cream uh, cone that is melting. Um, absolutely beautiful. And then you get Louis Vuitton that sells, you know, clothing and um, accessories and you get just like a whole lot of nature and it creates so much beauty. Number 14 is the need to satisfy curiosity. Human beings are curious by nature. Just ask Eve from the biblical days. And um, that curiosity, you know, no, it did not kill the cat. It just got us to research a little bit more. So notice, you know, the question in this ad, what if it happened here? Now we don't know what it is, but I bet if we go to stopthedrill.org, we will find out, and that's what the advertisement is inviting us to do. So that curiosity appeal um, is actually our, our natural desire to learn, and every human being has this. Here's another one, an elephant never forgets. And this is a, an advertisement uh, for condoms, you know, for Durex condoms. Um, and it, again, it uses, you know, the, the um, elephant as our symbol because we know that the animal has very good memory. Finally, number 15 is um, our physiological needs. Not to be confused with psychological, physiological is our bodily needs. So what does our body need? Our body needs food, our body needs water, our body needs sleep. And notice this advertisement right now, sleep like a baby. <laughs> and it appeals to that desire that we have. Now, I talked a whole lot about pathos just because the article that I'm having you guys read addresses all of those appeals. So what I wanted to do now is talk about ethos and every single rhetorical analysis is going to have 
strong ethos, hopefully. Now, some ads, they're hit or miss. And notice this one, um, actually these two, I wanted you guys, I wanted you guys to compare them. I put the Trump 2020 campaign and the Biden 2020 campaign, not to make things political, but, um, this, a lot of these political campaign ads are meant to advertise the candidate, right? Like vote for this guy or vote for that guy. And how do they do that? They want to build some kind of trust in the person. Um, sometimes they do that by talking about the accomplishments that this person made or possibly, you know, the promises that this person is giving us if we go ahead and vote for them. A lot of times, however, ethos-based arguments are going to have some kind of bias, especially, let's say, uh, if I'm leaning towards one side versus another, you might detect a little bit of bias in the way that I argue. So ethos just means character, credibility, how we build trust in our writing. So if you guys can take a moment and watch both ads, I would love to know, and you can contact me with your opinions, I would love to know what your thoughts are on uh, how Trump is building his character versus how Biden is building his character in the 2020 campaigns. Um, and then we get Logos. So Logos is the um, appeal to logic. And this is the, the use of factual information in order to win an argument or to make a convincing argument. I put the commercial ad, um, I'm sorry, the print ad of the iPhone 5S. And notice that uh, underneath it, you're going to see so many facts listed. And what does it tell us? It tells us, you know, what kind of sensor it has, the fingerprint identity, the ultra fast LTE wireless, the 64 bit architecture. Notice how it's listing all of these qualities that the phone has as a way to advertise its appeal. So this is what, why you should choose the iPhone 5S because of these reasons. And, um, you know, those are all good reasons to invest in some kind of technology. You know, you want, you want technology that has uh, some of these factual parts to it. So again, logos is the use of facts and reason, um, the use of logic and, um, basically the use of technical information in a rhetorical analysis. Now, rhetorical analysis is not just about uh, the logos, pathos, ethos, and all of that. It's also about the arrangement, the way that you organize your argument. I wanted to give you guys a negative example. This is a disaster of an ad. That your eye uh, is just confused on where to look or what is being advertised. Is it Facebook? Is it the Whopper? What is going on in this ad? And that's because of the messy arrangement. Now, having a clear, logical, even simple arrangement, having an arrangement that is effective is also another way for your rhetorical analysis to be successful. And finally, the style of your rhetorical analysis. Sometimes that's in the language that you choose, um, the fact that you come across as unbiased. Um, I put in another disaster of an ad here because um, we know that Sephora sells to a largely female audience, but I'm sorry, this is not appealing for females. It's like almost not knowing your audience. And the question here is how far is too far? And the style of the rhetorical analysis is really, you know, dependent on what the writer is intending or what the creator is intending. If it's just for shock value, chances are it might not be as successful. So with all of those things in mind, we also, I'm sorry, we're not going to go over that. Uh, we will have a strong rhetorical analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial um, and please let me know if you have any questions at all.